Today we're going to show you how to install our 530 chain conversion on 2003 and earlier 5-speed Sportster models. It includes the proper offset sprockets front and rear for an easy install. We're starting out with a bone stock 1998 Sportster here. We've already removed the exhaust. So we are going to eliminate the belt drive. This procedure is the same if you're running one of our hardtail kits. We also, we're going to do this with a 150 series tire on this bike just to show you guys that it will clear. So with a quarter inch Allen socket, you're going to remove your rear master solder. With a 5 16 socket, you'll need to remove the brake line. You will need to remove this pivot pin from underneath the brake lever. If you have forward controls, this will be further forward on the motorcycle. There is a cotter pin in the back side of this you have to remove first. This pin will push out. And now you can just move this out of your way. Now using a 3 16 Allen socket, remove the three bolts on the sprocket cover. There is another large nut that holds your sprocket cover on. It'll come off when you take your front exhaust pipe off. It would have been located right here underneath the right side foot peg. The transmission sprocket nut is left hand thread, so you're going to have to go clockwise to get this off. Now you can remove your front pulley. And what we're going to do now is remove the bottom shock bolts on both sides. Now you can remove the axle. This is a 15 16 on the nut. Keep track of where all of your spacers go. Different ears are going to be a little bit different on their spacers. 2000 and up uses a different style bearing in their wheel and they have a different spacer set up. All right, so now you can take your rear wheel out.
Using a 5-8 socket, you're going to remove all of the original rear sprocket bolts. Using the supplied bolts and the original washers, torque the new rear sprocket to 45 to 55 foot pounds if using a wire wheel or 55 to 65 foot pounds using a cast wheel. You can now install the new front sprocket. You're going to want to use red Loctite on the sprocket nut. And remember this is left hand threads. You will reuse your original retaining collar and Allen bolts to hold it down. Use blue Loctite on the Allen bolts. At this point, you can reinstall your rear wheel and spacers in the same order that they came apart. At this point, you can install your new chain. We send the chains extra long because we don't know if our customers are going to be installing this kit on a stock swing arm bike, on one of our hardtails that has a couple inches of stretch, or even a stretch swing arm. So, we send a 120 link chain and you'll have to shorten it. So we're going to show you what you need to do that. First off, we've got the axle slid all the way forward in the axle slot in the swing arm. This procedure is going to be the same whether you're doing a hardtail or a swing arm bike. So we're going to go ahead and set the chain over the sprockets. Now what you're going to want to do is pull the chain pretty much as tight as you can with the axle all the way forward and as you can see it's gonna it's still gonna hang a little bit loose but that's gonna show you which link you need to cut out of your chain and then when you tighten it up it'll it'll tighten the chain up that's why we start as far forward as we can in the axle slot we're gonna use a marker to mark the pin that we want to grind out and then your master link is gonna go from this link to this link. So we're removing about eight inches of this chain for a stock swing arm bike. Now we're gonna show you guys how to do this with a grinder and a hammer and a punch. We have a chain breaker here of course, but we wanna show you how to do it with tools that you more likely have in your garage. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to remove the link. This is just a short piece of chain we had laying around, but same thing. So this would be the pin that you marked on the bike and we want to dispose of this end of the chain. So this would be the short, short end you're going to throw away. This would be the side that you're going to use. So what we're going to do is show you how to do with a grinder because you probably don't have a chain breaker in your toolbox. And you should have a grinder in your toolbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind the head off of this pin and this pin. We're going to flip it over and grind the heads off of the pins on the other side of the link as well and then just drive them out with a punch.
So now we've got the pins ground on both sides. Now, if you don't have a vise, you can just, if you have a hole in your bench, or you can drill a hole in a two by four or something like that and set the pin over the top of that. And that's all you really need to do, and then you can separate the two halves of the chain. So we send along a clip type master link with your chain kit. It's gonna come with a clip type and a rivet type. Most guys don't have the tools to do the rivet type master link. So we send along this clip style. When you get this, it's gonna come with four O-rings, the clip, the other link, and this little tube of grease. And what you're gonna have to do before you put this together is grease the O-rings and the pins up. So we'll show you how to do that. Just put some grease on all the parts basically before you put it together. So there we've got two O-rings lubed up just smear the grease around on the o-rings good and then we're going to come over and install the master link from the back side and now we're going to take two more o-rings that have been greased and slide them over the pins and then the outer plate. Okay, so we've got the proper tools here to actually install these master links, but we're trying to show you guys how to do it with tools you might have in your toolbox. And again, on an O-ring chain, this is a little tricky because we're having to kind of squish these O-rings into position and they're, they're wanting to push this plate back out. So, we're just working it on there with a pair of ice grips. And as you can see, he's squeezing a little bit on one end, a little bit on the other. Until you have it on there far enough that you can put the retaining clip on the chain. We're ready to put the master link clip on the master link. You always want to make sure you get these right. You're going to want this side of it to be in the direction of rotation. Just going to take the clip and slide it rear, rearward into position, and it'll just snap in there. Now we are ready to tighten up our chain. We have the axle slid all the way forward in the axle slots. And it's pretty snug, but it, it's loose enough where it can still move with the adjusting screws. So what we're going to do right now is, as you can see, we've got the adjusters completely loose. We're going to snug both sides up just to take the slop out of the adjusters. I'm not actually moving the axle yet. I'm just taking the slop out of the adjusters just to get it snug. Now what we want to do is tighten both sides equally. And as you can see right now, we have a lot of slop in the chain. We're going to go to about a half inch of slop in the chain to start. And then after you ride it, you're going to have to check this and, and make your adjustment after the break in on the chain. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna adjust each side equally. And I know that we have a ways to go here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two full rotations on the nut on each side, which will be, that's a half rotation, one, one and a half, two. 
A little bit goes a long ways. Same thing over here. Half, one, one and a half, two. And then check, check where you're at. We still got a ways to go. Okay, so we're gonna show you how far the chain moves with just one rotation of the nut back here. That was one turn of the nut. One turn of the nut on the other side. And we still need to go some more. So I'm gonna give each one another full turn. Just making sure I'm doing both sides equally at this point. That's probably a little too loose yet, but at this point you're going to want to actually stand behind the bike. And, and as you can see, this chain's running pretty straight, so we can keep tightening both sides equally. Since we're close here, we've got about an inch of chain slack here. I'm just going to give each nut a half rotation. check it again. At this point we're going to tighten up the axle. We're ready to reinstall the sprocket cover. We'll put blue Loctite on all the Allen bolts. These are different lengths. You can now reinstall your rear master cylinder. This is a 516 socket. This nut here holds your exhaust on and this cover. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put your exhaust on now. But once you've got your exhaust back in position, you need to put in this pivot pin in your brake lever. Now again, if you've got forward controls, this is going to be much further forward on the bike. Make sure that's in all the way. And then there's a hole in the back side that you got to put this cotter pin through. Here it is all finished up. And we're going to show you guys that we have plenty of clearance everywhere between the chain and the sprocket cover, between the chain and the engine case, between the chain and the frame here. This has got a Dunlop 150 tire, which we measured out all the different brands of 150 tires that we had in the shop. And the Dunlop was the widest. So that's what we mounted on this wheel just for this video but you can see there's plenty of clearance there. I can stick my finger between the tire and the chain. We have clearance between the original shock bolts and the hardware that we send along. The wheel spins freely, nothing hits. 
you can see that the sprockets are in perfect alignment. We did not have to use any kind of a spacer behind this sprocket or the front sprocket. So the offsets that are built into our chain conversion sprockets are perfect to align with each other without running any kind of weird spacers behind it or anything like that. Also, when you order your chain conversion kit, we send you the sprocket per your year. Um, some of these sprockets out there have got an adapter ring and they're all for the 2000 and later style hubs with the sealed bearings. And then you are run an adapter sleeve to go to a 99 and earlier wheel. When you go to our website and you check out, you're going to select the year of bike that you're putting this on and we're going to send you the right sprocket. So you don't have to run any weird adapters, no spacers, none of that stuff.